So Zoom should have the other recordings saved. I will uh, splice them together so we don't miss much and don't continue uh, having a, <laughs> more of your time taken. So again, thank you all for coming back um, on a different computer, so we should be all right. Here we have, uh, I think we were talking about um, in the money, at the money, and out of the money. So if you're buying contracts within the same month expiry, so four weeks, you want to be as close to at the money as you can. So within one or two points, if you can become in the money, even better, but obviously this expires. This is the, the latest contract with a weekly expiry. And you can see how expensive it can, they, they can, can become, especially if you have a small account. So um, with it being tomorrow, Wednesday, I would say to get between a $96 and $97 contract within the, the Disney. So do we have any questions regarding um, what are what is an option? Um, the different types of options there are before we move forward to the Greeks. All right. So here we have. Um, Sorry, Jacob. Yeah. If I buy a 97 on the call side, am I still at the money or I have to buy it on the put side to be at the money? So technically you are, I would say you're at the money. I mean, if we round up, right? So technically it is um, out of the money if you want to be specific, just because it's 50 cents to 46 cents. If we want to be on the hundred percent specific terms, you're technically out of the money at $97. 96, oh, you can you. see right, you can see this dotted line right here. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So a lot of people, they don't, they don't say at the money. A lot of people will say in the money or out of the money. I like to say at the money just because it gives you some leeway. So, so for me, I would say anywhere between 95 to 97, these three would technically be at the money just because it's within, I would say 96 and 97 would be at the money. 95 could be considered in the money. And that's for calls. Obviously with puts, it's going to be backwards the other way around. That's why okay. you can see it reflected here. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's just kind of like I explained, when buying short-term expiry contracts, they should be as close to in the money as possible. Long-term contracts, three months to years, couple years out, you can uh, they can be further out of the money because as we're talking about Robinhood and keeping the whole Reddit stonks go up, right? So if you're expecting a call, most of the examples I'm going to be giving are just for call options for um, easy purposes and, and just to kind of be on this the same page. So then we explained earlier what that 100 shares, what this 100 shares means. So do we have any questions regarding that? Um, and, I, and when I go live also, so sorry, this right here, um, and you can see how when you get further out of the money, this right here expiry, it doesn't show on here, but this is a, a, a lar larger, longer date expiry. So you can see once we get to 105, it then starts to double to 110 or move by five. And I always explain when I'm going live about psychological levels. And you can see here, algorithms, computers, like even numbers too. So this $95 strike is at 4.284 thousand. So 4,284 um, open interest. So that means that's how many options, contracts are still open for this um, expi expiry price, expiry date. You come to 100, look how much bigger that. So for this 99, only 23 options. So that's why I always say buy an extra so instead of buying this, because it's going to be very difficult or a lot more difficult, I should say, to have this to be sold rather than this 13,000. That's just simple supply and demand economics. And then you can see 101 all the way to 104, how much open interest there is. And then you jump to 105, 12,000, 110, 22,000. So this is a, a little bit of psychological um, teachings based off of 
um, strike price and even um, when we talk about support and resistance at psychological levels. When we say 100, this is why it's going to be such so difficult to break just because it has to go through this many people, these many contracts before we go one way or the other. I saw someone come off mute where you got to ask a question or have a statement. Yeah, I, no, I did that by accident. Sorry? Can you hear me? All right, so I had a question. So those contracts down there, by like say a hundred dollars strike uh, strike price, um, that would that would be more swing training, right? That's why it has Correct. so much open interest. Yes. So unfortunately, I don't have the um, expiry dates, but what I'm uh, what I'm assuming is this is the um, this is going to this is a few weeks out. Just because the way Disney moves, the way yeah. Disney moves is, is is pretty slow. So there, it wouldn't be two hundred dollars. Um, so you can, yeah. So you can see here. So this is the same week expiry expiry on Friday. This hundred dollars okay. is worth twenty five. This hundred um, dollars strike price is only worth twenty five dollars per contract. All right, so, so then now we come in here. So this, yeah, uh, for swinging. So basically, the closer it gets to one hundred, that's how you make the money, right? For calls, correct. So if this goes I'll up, call. then this is gonna continue to rise. If this goes down, then this will also go down with it. Oh, okay. All right. But I'm if you buy, if, if you buy puts, if this goes up. This hundred dollars is going to start going down. So okay. buying puts is shorting the market. If, when this goes down, if you expect this to go down, then this will go up. So that's why you. So that's okay. why you see these are inverse. All right. And that brings us to the the Greeks. Oops. So this was it's supposed to be there, but <laughs> so who wants to explain um, Delta? So this will explain, this will answer your question a little bit more, Millie. Who wants to explain what is Delta in your own words? Uh, Delta is, um, it shows how much, how much the, the contract will increase um, or decrease per dollar. Correct. So yeah, so it's how sensitive, again, the, the literal definition, how sensitive is an option price according to stock price change for each dollar increase or decrease. So like I said, I'm going to be talking more about calls. So if it increases, um, call prices will go up if the stock price decreases. So delta will always be between zero and one for calls and for puts zero and negative one. So, and it's a percent chance of being in the money. Um, so here we have, so you can see here, so this right here is how I was talking about. It's super easy to read on Robinhood. We have our Greeks down here, Delta, Gamma, Theta. You have the Disney $96 call. Um, the last trade, like I was saying before the computer turned off. So the bid to ask is $1.60 to $1.69. So if you bought, so you can push a dollar sixty nine and you'll get that immediately. However, someone typed in a dollar sixty two, bought a limit order, and that was the last trade. You can see the volume. So these are how many contracts were traded throughout the trading day. So there's four thousand eight hundred, uh, roughly four thousand eight hundred contracts traded throughout the trading day, and there's roughly a thousand seven hundred left. And then now we come here. Then we go to the 96. So you see Delta is 5790, Gamma, Theta. Um, so we come here, Delta. Do, do, does somebody know why this is going to be a little bit different? Why this would be less and this one would be more? If it's all based off of math, it should be the same, right? So the reason why Robinhood and TD Ameritrade are different is because there's extra fees. So a lot of the fees are 
caked and baked into the price action already. And then, like I said, the closer you get to in the money, the more in the money you get. So it's 96.50, the more in the money you get, the more delta moves towards one. The farther out of the money you get, the farther delta moves away from one and closer to zero. So if this strike, so if we have, if we bought a, let's say we bought a $96 call for $160, and it raises one dollar. What are we going to reach? What would that? What would that be at? Or how much more would that increase? With all things being equal. So based off of what we talked about, delta. If we bought this ninety-six dollar call for one hundred and sixty dollars or a dollar sixty, how much will it increase? If the strike price goes up one dollar, two dollars and sixteen. Sorry, two dollars and sixteen. Two dollars and sixteen. Um, oh no, I apologize. Two dollars yeah. and sixty. Right. So yeah, so it'll go up essentially fifty-seven dollars and ninety cents, or we can say fifty-eight dollars. So what? One hundred and sixty plus fifty-eight would be. Um, Two yeah, 216, 218. So yeah, roughly between 216 and 218. So that's with all things being equal. However, we, we have this gamma and theta here. So the next one is theta. Who wants to explain what theta is? What's another word for theta? Or I guess it's two words for theta. You can write, write it in the chat. What are What are some other terminology we use for theta? Right, time decay. Correct. So yeah, so when we think of theta, we think of time. And the time is within the trading day. So, okay. so, so you lose value. Of, so this is always negative because time decay goes throughout. So you lose value of the option per theta each, um, each trading day. So the last month of option expiry, theta rapidly increases. So if you're swinging a long-term swing, three months, four months, theta is really not going to be that, that it's not really going to be that significant. But if you buy a contract today and it expires on Friday, the likelihood of you to be reaching it, especially if you buy out of the money, the likelihood of you reaching that is going to be very difficult. And that's where theta will then become to, um, enter inside your contract even more and take away. So you can see here, so this is expiry of 324. So this week, this Friday, you can see theta. So if this stock price stayed the same at this $96 and 50 cents, and we bought one for 160, with everything else being equal, and we go an entire trading day without the stock price moving, how much will this contract be worth? Only taking into consideration theta. Right. So that would be to, essentially tomorrow, 1.38. Because we have the theta that's taking into it. And then you can see here also where the theta comes into play, even more so. So we have the 93. So the closer to in the money that you are, the more theta is going to affect. And then the farther away oh. out of the money, the, the least theta will affect just because of the price of the, the contracts. How did we get at the get to the 1.38? Um, was there a calculation that was done or how was the calculation done? Yeah, so theta, you can see this negative sign here on theta, correct? So, so just subtracting. Yeah, so Tina put it in the chat. So we have two points. And again, remember, we moved the decimal two places because of the 100. So awesome. or you, if, you. if you have this $1.60, <laughs> you have the 0. 0.22. 
So because of theta time decay, and the best way to think of this is the likelihood of that to be reached. So with it, with us being in the money right now at $96, we want this to continue going up. The more that this goes up, if this goes up to tomorrow, this opens up at $97.50, we're going to be up another $58. And then, of course, you have to take in time decay, but that's why we call it decay. Just like an animal that decays, it, it, it slowly rots over time. It's not instantly tomorrow. There's not going to be a point on your trading day where like, oh, that's where the $23 got taken out of my, 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 my call option. It's going to be, it, it's slowly taking it out over time, over time. And then the more that this goes up, the higher that this uh, time decay will, will continue to grow. And then next we have gamma. So delta and theta are two of the, are the main, main two that you'll be looking at um, regarding when we talk about buying an option or a put. These are the two that you'll be seeing. However, with gamma, this came into play during the stock um, boom with the game in AMC. So it's called a gamma squeeze. So gamma is how much delta changes given a $1 change in stock price. So you can even see here, I'm not going to go into much detail about it. I don't even have it on. So this is, these are screenshots. I don't even have it on my, um, my own personal options, but I can see it. Um, if I wanted to bring it up. So you can see it here, gamma. So again, if we have how much delta change is given a $1 in stock price, right? So if this goes up, so if this stock price goes to 97.50, what will our delta be now? So if this is a, a $160, it raises a dollar, we go up to 58. So now we're at 234. Yeah. So now gamma, so now delta is going to be 0.69. So if we go up another dollar, we essentially will be going up another $70 based off of our delta. So we can now calculate, so this $58. So I'm just gonna round up to 58, extraordinaire put it in there at 69, so 70. So if this stock price moves up $2 from $96.54 to $98.54, we're essentially going to be gaining $133 per contract per $1 increase. And so that's and so this explains a lot of a lot of people are confused how GameStop and AMC um, shot up so much and so fast is because of this gamma. Because it was moving so fast, it was called a gamma squeeze. So we always talk about the market makers. Market makers are the ones that set these prices, that set the 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 intrinsic, um, the implied volatility, the intrinsic um, velocity. So IV is what it's called. And when this continues going up, when whenever you had a stock that was twelve dollars, and next thing you know it's at forty dollars, they have to rewrite this. But the more that it kept going. The more it was squeezing, the more squeezing has became a gamma squeeze, which is extremely, extremely difficult because the stock price and the stock options couldn't keep up with this uh, Greek here. So I know that I said this is options 101, but that's a, a quick um, TLDR for how the GameStop squeeze and the AMC squeeze happened. It wasn't because of the price going up. It was simply supply and demand. And this gamma couldn't keep up with it. So imagine if um, for Disney, if it goes up $2, just for another dollar increase, this goes from 57 to 69, then another dollar increase will go from 69 to 80. And then that's where you can see that um, exponential growth happening. So you can see here on Robinhood, Delta, Gamma, Theta are the top. And then underneath these three, you have Vega, Rho, 
and then the um and then another one that I don't even use. But basically this implied volatility right here is all accord to Vega. So it moves based off of 1% moved on implied volatility. So premiums, who here drop a one if you have tried to trade prem, um, try, try to trade earning reports. Sorry, that was a tongue twister. Or have watched people do earnings. Yeah, exactly. And it, how? So earnings, the implied volatility is off the charts. And a lot of times you can see some people, the, the stock can move six, seven points and your um, options are still the exact same because of this um, Vega or implied volatility. So you can see this implied volatility at, is at 38.52%. So this is about, uh, this is roughly normal. So you can see here, but the closer that you, the, the more you become, so this is, it's implied. So it's what the market makers think, okay, if this goes, how the premiums, how the premiums can shoot up. So anytime you get above 45 to 50%, the premiums will go up. So if you ever, um, one thing to do, especially it's it's when you're if you're paper trading, paper trade earnings. Even if you have your normal account, cre create a paper trading account and just paper trade earnings and buy something ten dollars out of the money, puts ten dollars out of the money, calls and see what happens. Um, a lot of times, this implied volatility would shoot up. So if it's at thirty eight point five two percent now, this could go up to sixty or seventy percent. And if this shoots up to 70%, the more volatile a stock is, the better the premiums become. So I'll say that again. The more volatile a stock be is, the better the premiums become. So essentially, if this goes up to 60, 70%, this $1.60 could shoot up to $1.80 based strictly off the volatility because people like to gamble. People like to take risk. And that's where people you see people ma making tens of thousands of dollars, and that's where you see people losing tens of thousands of dollars. So if it gets above 50%, 60%, no, they become more expensive. So essentially the higher IV, yeah, so you can straddle options as well, but I, I would recommend doing paper trading the whole time throughout. <laughs> I, I, I've made a lot of money on options and I got burned a lot of times on options. So essentially it is a gamble. You can see uh, people beating earnings and then still the, the stock drops or, and people say, oh, the outlook is good. This is, we, we, we missed earnings, but we're expecting a higher, um, during, during COVID, the NVIDIA or not NVIDIA. Um, oh, I'm blanking on the, yeah, exactly. Discipline, discipline is everything. But the vaccine makers during COVID, they play the options game to a T. Whenever they were talking, they always had forward thinking thoughts. And with Moderna, yeah. Um, we were scalping Moderna, we we're scalping Pfizer pretty much every day based off of what the CEOs were, were going to be saying. So, so the so a, a a good rule is when applied vol when applied volatility goes up, then you 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 sell. When applied volatility is down within like ten percent, if you see it within 10, 15, 20 percent, that's when you buy. Because the 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 vol the the market makers and the market is thinking that the stock is going to be, it's still going to be moving up and down, but it's not going to have dramatic price increases or price decreases. So really nothing to be, so Vega wouldn't pay much attention to it. Um, and that's why you don't even see it really on the, the most of the Greeks, but you see it here, the implied volatility.
So the three um, technicals that I look at when I'm buying, I look at the implied volatility, I look at delta, and I look at theta. So do you have any questions regarding these stocks? Or not stocks, the these the Greeks. Hey Jacob. Hello, Jacob. Yes. So this is only for if you want to swing trade, correct? Uh no, so this is for any type of trading. If again, when I like, kind of what I said at the beginning, um yeah, they're super hard to understand. I still don't fully understand them, but um, so so when you're buying short-term expiries, so same week expiry up to two, three weeks, you want to buy as close to in the money as possible. So really you want to go out, out of the money. The only time you want to go out of the money, and I would suggest really not doing it too far out of the money is if you are swing trading. Because... Like I, um, so these are delta and theta is constantly moving. When the price goes up and the price goes down, delta moves with it. Every single second, theta is ticking. Every single second that the market goes, theta is moving with it. Yeah, theta, theta is a killer on um, same day, zero DTE zero days to um, exit contracts. So you buy a spy contract on Monday and you want um, for Monday expiry, that's where you'll see theta. If you buy a contract four or five months out, you really don't even see theta. Oh, uh, cool, thank you. Yeah, so um, Vanessa, that's a good, that's a great question. We do try to do better. So if we don't put a expiration date, it's most likely, I would say 90% of the time for that week expiry. And at the moment for, I would say the past few months, we really haven't this month in um, February, we've, We've just now started to do more swinging. There, there last year, basically everything was because it was so um the market was so crazy. Most most trades were strictly um scalps. So we're slowly starting to get in, but even now I'm I'm still kind of hesitant. Even the, I called out, I said Airbnb, but I was really hesitant to swing it over the night. Um, so I, I put a disclaimer, be, be careful. So, right. Yeah, and that's what a thing you have to um, think about. So James, you said that you are, um, yeah, only need to worry about Greeks if you're swinging, not scalping. So it, if you have, set a goal on what you are doing and that's where the discipline comes in if you're going to scout um and you say okay i'm going to come in and i'm going to get out well if it doesn't go into your weight in the first five or ten minutes um sell at a loss and then come back yeah i haven't been doing that that's where i've been trying to practice the discipline because i've been going off of support and resistance to determine my entries and exits and sometimes right. i'll, I'll get in too early and I'll see that thing go negative like 30%. And yeah, usually up loss tells me to go out at 10, but I'm looking at that support and I'm like, no, it's going to go. And then as it does go, yeah, it'll go up like 70, but that's where I'm trying to figure out how to set my stop losses and everything. Right. So for scalp, it's difficult. Um, I usually use more mental stop loss when I'm scalping, um, but for swings, um, Brandon talks a lot about it. Brandon is going to do a trade uh, actual class next Tuesday. I'm not sure if it's for free or for VIP yet. Uh, we'll we'll know on Monday, but on how to read and how to 
the chart breakdowns. So you definitely don't want to miss that. And that he explains the ratio. So he's really good at explaining. So basically, you have, like you said, you're supporting your resistance. You have your delta, your theta in the back of your mind. And you say, okay, this is where my stop loss is going to be. And maybe it's one. And then this is where my exit point is going to be. So it's one to a four ratio. So your risk, your risk to reward, everyone's going to lose. If you traded 100% without a loss, you would have literally all the money in the world. Because if you could trade without knowing that the, the, the move's going to move against you, you would just go all in every single time and then eventually you would take everybody's money. So that's why it's super, super important to keep your stop loss. I know it's hard, especially for scalping and you have same day expiry or even same week expiry. So some homework, I'll, um, we have a, a one more slide, but a homework to do is tomorrow during the market, watch the implied volatility. So I'm going to go live from one to three in the VIP um, e EST. So watch, just strictly watch implied volatility. Take a screenshot at market open at nine o'clock. And then once Powell comes at one or two, see where the price action is and see, take another screenshot and see exactly how the IV has changed. And I I'm, could almost guarantee it's going to be very different. Yeah, and you just have to have confirmation and, and confidence. So yeah, it's always good to, to set a stop loss. Um, again, tune in on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, so we're kind of just talking about options. So it's always good to set a, a stop loss. But Tuesday, uh, Brandon will go more into how to set your stop loss, how to read the charts on regarding the ratio of my stop loss versus the ratio of um, how much I'm going to gain. Like Brandon strictly trades three, four, he'll buy through, even if he's scalping, he'll still give himself time and buy two or three weeks out. Even if he's selling that same day, just in case the trade doesn't go his way, he has a specific stop loss that he has in mind and then he can move forward. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I'm just not getting to your, even the time is hard for me. Right. It's hard. It's definitely hard for sure. All right. So IV and open interest. So open interest is exactly what you would think it is. It's the open contracts that are currently for this stock strike price expiry date. So for Disney 96 calls, expiring on Friday, March 24th, there is 1,716 open interest. So uh, amongst all of the um, books, et cetera, Robinhood, uh, TD Ameritrade, let me see if we can come back here. Oh, this is not for the same, okay. Um, so I'll bring up my TD Ameritrade after this as well, and we can look at some different stocks. But you can see here, so yeah, so, so and then implied volatility is how volatile the market makers and the market is thinking that stock's gonna be at this certain time. Um, I'm gonna share some, I'll share a deep dive. This guy does a really, really good job explaining it. Um, he's one of the people that I watched when I, um, even today I, I watch his, um, channel. It's called In the Money, not Jonah Lupta. I, I, I'm not sure this guy's name. His YouTube channel is, um, In the Money. So he, he strictly does Robin Hood. He's very critical of Robin Hood. Um, but for beginners and especially understanding the Greeks, the user interface, like I said at the beginning, Robin Hood is, um, so just go through, he explains IV, he, had, he has a, a whole video on um, the, the implied volatility, he has a whole video on intrinsic velocity, um, so 
so yeah, he's definitely, uh, I, I posted in the chat. But I still, I still watch this over and over and over and over. If I get discouraged, um, and and he'll tell you straight up, you're not to buy out of the money. So he also does. Um, he has some Weeble uh, options, videos, etc. So, and then I'll also post some other. Um, and then here. Now I'll go to the, this is the next slide that I'm going to. So I know this looks like mumbo jumbo, right? <laughs> it's like, what is, what's on my screen right now? So who can tell me what, which one looking at this has a weekly expiry and a, um, a further out expiry date? What do the one on the left, which one is that? Weekly. Correct. I think. And so this right here is the option profit calculator. And it shows you on that day, if this stock price is at this um, price. So if Disney, so on, so tomorrow is the 22nd, right? If Disney hits $98.40, we will have gained $524 based off of. So essentially, this is based off of four calls bought at the end of money ratio. I'll just bring it up here because that's very confusing. So here's the website. We go to long call. Don't worry about these spreads and all of that. And it's very simple. So I type in Disney, the ticker, I click it and it will maybe. So it's showing $96.55. And I say, I want to buy. So earlier um, I was talking about writing. So, so it also shows you if I want to, if I have a hundred shares and I want to write, then that's what it's going to happen. Um, and then let's say I want two contracts and then the option, right? So if I, let's say I go out to the 21st of April and I want, let's, I'm going to go a little bit out of the money. So you can see here, this is where that theta and delta and all the Greeks. So a hundred dollar contract for expiry Fridays, 20, $24. The, the ask price. The next week, if I gave myself a week, I'm spending $71. Another week, $108. So you can see because the time decay is so low, it's not eating into those calls. So if this is a 14th April and we're at the same price, $96.50, how much will this $100 call be? Do y'all remember what it was on the 24th of March at the same same day? But all else being equal, it's going to be $24. $25, now, it might be $26, $28, depending, but it's going to be around $20 to $30 just because of time decay. So this is mainly time decay eating into the stock. So let's do this 21st April. One stock is $199, or we can say $200. Let's just do one for mess, for easy mess days. So then you click calculate, and this tells you that what day does the stock need to be for you to be making money. So these are percentages, percent of maximum risk. So let's do profit and loss. So this kind of shows you how theta works. So if I, so I have a hundred dollar contract, right? If it, if it reaches a hundred dollars, if this I have until April 8th or April 10th, I have until April 10th for this stock to reach a hundred dollars for me to be positive. 
And if it does, I'll gain 4% and that's $8. Does everybody see that? Is anybody confused? Does everybody understand? Okay. So tomorrow, let's say Disney comes out and they say, we beat the Santas, we beat Florida. We're going to keep a hold of our imminent, or the government can't do imminent domain. We're going to keep a hold of our all of our lands. And this stock shoots up from $96.55 to $100 tomorrow. This is how much profit we will make. $151. So that $199 contract, so let's just say $200 for mass sakes. We buy that contract at $200. If it hits $100, the stock price tomorrow, we now will be making $250. Or we that that contract will be worth two hundred and fifty dollars, and then let's say it goes up a dollar every three days. So we count one, two, three, one, two, three. So now we're at one hundred and two dollars. That is now worth one hundred and ninety-two dollars per. We have made a profit of one hundred ninety-two dollars. But let's say it stays at one hundred dollars. It hits a hundred and it just stays and trades sideways for a week. Every single day we are losing money. This right here is theta. This is time decay, time decay, time decay. And then, so if you, if it hits a hundred dollars and you don't sell and you let this get down to negative 60, probably shouldn't be trading options. It's not for you. But of course we can, and that's why I always say buy three to five stocks. So if you can afford let's say four stocks at $200, you have $800. It jumps up here. I sell, if I sell um, three of these, so my risk, so I buy four, or let's say I sell two. My risk was what? If I buy four at 200, so I have $800. What do you mean? Do I mean contracts? You were saying if you buy four or five stocks, or you meant four oh, or five stocks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So if I buy four, let's say I buy four contracts at that $200. So my risk, my total risk is $800 for Disney. That's how much I can lose. My maximum amount of loss is $800. And tomorrow, I, I let's say I did my charting well and boom, it breaks through some resistance and it soars. Okay, at four, so let me sell two of them at $150. So that right there takes off 300. So out of the $800 that I had, or sorry, this is $150 profit. So at $800, um, so now this contract is worth $350 because the contract initially was $200. And then now you can see this is the profit. I have profited 150. So now my profit is so that, that contract's worth $350. I sell two of them. How much money am I taking off of the board of my risk? So if I bought four con... Oh, I don't know four. what Vanessa is. That's weird. Did that just pop up? Yeah, exactly. $700. Thank you. I don't know. How did you do that? <laughs> um, so now I'm at uh, so $700. And then, so by risk now, it went from $800 to $100 because I sold two of the contracts. So I still have two contracts left. Um, but the, the most that I can lose off of this one trade is a hundred dollars if I don't sell these at all. And again, if you don't sell these and that, I don't know what else to tell you. So now I have two contracts and there's a hundred dollars remaining. So let's say I, 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 I wait for this to go back up. 
Um, I wait for this to go back up. It doesn't, it doesn't. And then now I just sell here. Um, so essentially I lost, if I sell here at 129, two days later, four days later, um, I sell the other two contracts and then we're happy. So I don't know how you all are writing on this uh, options. If you go to annotate, that. you can do uh, it. <laughs> annotate uh, in the view options. Off of my screen? I'm so confused, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see you there, but I don't know how you're writing it on my screen, but I'm not, obviously I'm not that good with computers as you, as you saw this morning. So, that right there um, is pretty much everything that I have. So you can see here, this is a little bit um, lar longer expiry. And this just shows you exactly how you can be moving forward. Um, and then for March, here we have that 96.50. So if I buy a $96 um, call, but you can see this is why people prefer to do uh, yeah, exactly. And this is why people prefer to do same day or same week expiry because look how enticing that is. So if this jumps up to 100, that uh, you, you can just see the difference. So these are all percentages. These aren't um, your profit and loss, but as a 700% gain this over or sorry so if it jumps up from the same so these are the exact same stock you can see 9660 9666 so if it jumps to 100 you gain 600 percent, which is really really good if you buy a same week expiry and it jumps up to 100 now you're at 1100 percent gain so you've doubled your money essentially but that's the risk you take and this is that's the risk to reward of longer longer expiry date and shorter expiry dates. So yesterday I called out a Disney three week uh, the uh, Disney call for three week expiry. I sold everything today just because of what's going on tomorrow, but I wanted to give myself that flexibility. Kind of do I wish that I played the same week expiry? Sure. Just because that would have had a larger return on my uh, investment for that. But that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being a lot uh, less risk adverse right now, currently. So I appreciate you all for jumping on. Um, I know that was a really, really quick deep dive, but again, this is just kind of an options 101 course for you all to see kind of what we do in the VIP um, I, and the small accounts challenge. We don't necessarily go over the, the Greeks, but we go over charts um, and, and how to, to pick the contracts. And I know somebody was talking about how to roll over the options. Um, are you in here? I'm not sure I'll have to reach out to them. So, okay. So, yeah. So, um, what do you, you, okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to really talk about how to roll over. That's a little bit of, um, it's a little advanced, but you can DM me. Um, and then uh, did Lay reach out to you? I just wanted to make sure you got your. So did, okay, so Lay hasn't reached. Okay, so I will um, message Lay because I you said that she called that out, right? She called out to roll over the. Yeah. Spy puts, if I'm not mistaken. I just want to make sure that you get um, answered by by tonight. So, 
Yeah, so rolling over is um, definitely level two. And I guess even the Vega kind of was, but I just wanted to go over the Greeks. That's why I didn't really spend much time on it. So, um, so yeah, so Kathy, I will talk with Lay and see if she's available. If not, I'm not sure what she did. I'll send you some videos on how to you use TD Ameritrade. Charles Schwab. Okay. So yeah, I can try to find some videos on that. And then I'll, like I said, I'll reach out to Lay to see exactly what that rollover she called out was. So are there any last questions, comments, um, critiques? I'm always up for um, constructive criticism. So, I mean, if you want to say that it was terrible, you can say that, but tell me why, please. So I know how to change in the future. So, um, awesome. I, I love to hear it. So I'm not going to have you say it now, but um, if you want, drop in the free chat what your next, what the, the next class you would like. Um, so we can try to get a poll going there. Whether it's options 202 or options 102, where we talk about rolling over where we talk about a little bit uh, deeper dive into exercising, et cetera, or something uh, different. But I really, really do uh, thank you. All, all my small account challenge, this is the video that I posted that Robin Hood introduction to options. That's the, the video I tell everyone to, to watch at the start. Well, I appreciate 